beautiful backyard with no wildlife is like a stage without actors, from hummingbirds to chipmunks. Wildlife is where all the action is. Hi, I'm Doug Rice. And I'm Greg Rayburn, and today we're here at Sam and Sarah Van Fleet's beautiful Vashon home to talk about creating backyard wildlife habitat. By hosting wildlife in your backyard, you not only get to enjoy the sights and sounds of the critters who visit, you also become a steward of your land. Plus, you'll reduce your stress by creating a more natural environment and encouraging birds and good insects to help control any problem pests you might have. Well, Sam and Sarah's garden is an inspiration both for its beauty and for what it gives back to the critters around us. Sarah, can you talk to us a little bit about what your motivation was for creating such a wonderful haven for wildlife? Sure, Doug. Um, we got the Landscaping for Wildlife bug in 1997 when we took a free course from uh, Russell Link through the DNR. Yeah. And he's, his enthusiasm for wildlife yeah. and his knowledge just was infectious. So we took it from there and um, one step at a time the garden took shape. We found this place in 1997 and we're just struck by the beauty of the site. Uh, the wildlife in the area was remarkable, wonderful mature trees, and we're surrounded by mountains and water, so we wanted to not compete with that, but to try to find a way to fit ourselves into the landscape. Uh, we then expanded our vision, um, starting with the vegetable garden, because I love food. We thought, well, why not provide food for more than just humans? And we thought of putting in a pond, and we put in a large wildlife pond. And from there, then we developed the other pond, the small pond, and some of the other garden features. And really, it, it's become sort of a local B&B &B for wildlife. I love to think of it as a stopover point for a couple of tired ducks on their way south, or migratory songbirds who can get a snack in the middle of winter with seed heads and other things that I leave in, through the garden. While I'm the plant person, Sam is really the, the design guy. He has the wonderful eye for lines and curves, rock walls, pathways. And between the two of us, we have a really nice balance of skill set. Well, thanks for showing us your garden. And uh, Sam and Greg are going to look around at some of the various features that they've created here. Thank you. You're welcome. Sam, you built this really great bird feeder over here. Would you tell me about it? I sure will, Greg. This is a one-of-a-kind bird feeder that I designed specifically for birds that prefer to eat on the ground. Juncos, towhees, a variety of songbirds. It's got a, a small one and a quarter inch grid that only they can fit into. They can't be harassed by larger mammals or larger birds. And uh, the raccoons and squirrels can't get at this seed. I noticed that it has a different kind of hole in the corner. What's the purpose of these? I, I did a little custom design, a larger uh, aperture so that the native Douglas squirrels can get into the cage, eat the seed, but the larger gray squirrels cannot. Well, this is a great design. What else do you have going on here? There's lots more to show, let's go. This is a thatch ant mound. They're a non-destructive beneficial ant. They're a huge food source for flickers and uh, we maintain a variety of those mounds all throughout the property. And we've got uh, bird boxes for a wide variety of species. Songbirds, northern flickers, barn owls, we have a bad house, we even have a Douglas squirrel box. Uh, always inviting them to stay a little while longer. The birds are a huge um, control for mosquitoes, bugs, uh, ants. Uh, they're a great benefit and they're, um, they're our friends. Some of the most important aspects of our wildlife plan are incredibly easy to achieve. A great example is our snake boards. It's a two by three sheet of plywood that I just toss out into the meadow into sunny areas and invariably we find a variety of snakes uh, resting and sunning underneath those boards. Rock piles are another great benefit to wildlife. Um, they are, create a thermal mass for a variety of reptiles, amphibians, small mammals, birds, raccoons, it's a real focal point for wildlife. We have many, many brush piles around our property. Again, it's one of those things that's so easy to create and it's a huge benefit for wildlife. We've got probably six or seven around the perimeter of our property. And one of the benefits for us is that we don't have to carry all the brush very far. You too can have a fantastic backyard wildlife sanctuary. All you have to do is provide food, water, shelter, and space.
Okay, let's talk about food. Now, you might not think about eating the little guys unless you're Shrek the ogre, but insects are the diet of many critters. So by having bugs around, you'll attract more wildlife. So choose the natural yard care approach and avoid using pesticides. That's good for you, for your family and pets too. And really very few insect species found in your yard could be harmful anyway. Oh, and avoid those electronic bug zappers. They kill far more good bugs than bad. For attracting native wildlife, native plants can't be beat. By having many different plants, you will naturally create insect diversity and that attracts different wildlife. Make sure you have plants blooming throughout the growing season to attract the most variety of birds. A landscape might include red flowering currant and Oregon grape for spring nectar, ocean spray for summer nectar, winter seeds, and wild rose for flowers and fruit that persist into the winter. Leaving seed heads on plants is another great way to keep the birds fed in the winter. Need help picking out plants? Check out our online native plant landscape site. And of course you can also choose to have a bird feeder that provides seeds or nectar for the birds. But remember you need to keep the bird feeders, especially hummingbird feeders, clean and disease free. Feeding stations should be cleaned and disinfected every two weeks. Water. Everything needs it to survive. Like bird feeders, bird baths are an easy option, but they too require extra care to keep them clean. Otherwise, they can become a source of disease for your birds. Every day the water should be changed. I like to use one of those hoses with a spray nozzle to clean out the bath while I refill it. You want to be sure to pick out bird baths that have gently sloping edges rather than steep edges. Otherwise, you'll have a bath without birds, and what's the point of that? If your bird bath has steep edges, you can fix the problem by placing some sticks and stones into the bath. If you have a lot of space, consider building a pond like the Van Fleets have here. You will want to be sure to have a circulating system, not just a stagnant pond, and that'll help reduce your mosquitoes. Of course, the centerpiece of your yard really is this amazing pond. It's true, the pond is not only the visual centerpiece of our property, but it's the, the absolute centerpiece of the entire wildlife plan for the property. What we learned through the course we took with the Department of Natural Resources is that water is crucial. It can be as small as a bird bath or as large as an 80 foot long pond. The bigger the better, and uh, we just maxed out the footprint. There are a lot of shallows in this pond. That's where most life happens in any body of water. That water tends to stay a little warmer and it's a little more nutrient rich. Another thing that we learn is that it's very important to have lots and lots of stems emerging from the water. That's where the uh, frogs are able to lay their egg casings. It's also a place that young frogs will congregate for safety. Now, what was here before? It was just a mucky sheep pasture. What we did was excavate and add a, uh, a thin liner and um, backfilled with soil, and then uh, we run uh, water into that. Yeah, and there's no fish in this pond. No fish at all. The reason we decided not to go with fish was uh, for two reasons. First of all, having fish creates the need for a biofilter. Without fish, we just have a recirc pump. And the second thing is we were told that normally kingfishers and herons will fish out just about anything that you stock. You mentioned a lot about the amphibians using this, but what other creatures inhabit your pond? Well, you know, it, it's amazing, Greg, how much of an attractant this pond has been. We've had a 30% increase in bird life since it went in. That accounts for close to 25 new species of birds since that water went in. Uh, we've gotten two species of frogs, two species of salamanders. I've counted at least seven species of dragonflies, and I'm sure there's lots more that I haven't identified yet. Thanks a lot for showing us your pond. Now your pond doesn't have to necessarily be as big as the Van Fleet's. Any water feature you put in your yard will be a magnet for wildlife. Nearly 75 species of birds and mammals in the Pacific Northwest nest or den in tree snags. In winter, when insects are scarce, woodpeckers and nearly 45 other species of birds and mammals rely even more heavily on snags and brush piles for both food and shelter. So if you have a snag in your yard, just think of it as a roadside diner for local wildlife. 
talking about space, we're not talking about solar systems. We're talking about the usable space each creature needs to survive. For example, lawns, while geographically they can occupy a huge amount of space, they're not usable for most wildlife. It's not because grass is bad, but we keep it short so it doesn't provide shelter, and we remove any flowers or seed heads that might provide some food. The same is true when we keep a hedge pruned so tight a bird can't even fly into it. What's the solution? Create a layered look to attract the widest variety of wildlife. Don't worry, it's easy, and Doug will show you how. For both aesthetic and ecological purposes, consider creating a layered planting plan with a taller tree canopy overhead, mid-range plants and shrubs between, and then lower ground covers and perennials to crowd out the weeds. This will provide a wide range of shelter and food for many birds and butterflies, and it'll look better too. As we're inviting all these critters to hang out in your yard, you may be worried about some uninvited guests that might crash the party. But there are some simple tips that really apply to all nuisance wildlife to keep them away. The basic rule is to put barriers to keep them out of areas where you don't want them. In this yard, a very aesthetic fence was built to keep the neighboring deer out of the vegetable garden. If you live on a lake, try plantings instead of lawn to keep the geese from hanging out and leaving their slippery deposits behind. Landscaping with shrubs also helps keep moles from being an aesthetic problem. You can't see the hills. Keeping pet food inside your home and covering all your trash to keep away scavengers such as raccoons, possums, or rats is another great tip. And since we're talking about inviting wildlife in, it's important to talk about keeping your pet from becoming a predator. Many people think that putting a little bell around their cat's neck helps warn wildlife. The only problem is no one told the wildlife that. It just doesn't work. So keep tiger indoors and protect your backyard wildlife and tiger. Studies show a free roaming cat's average lifespan is less than three years compared to 15 to 18 years for the average indoor only cat. Attracting wildlife may be as simple as what not to do. Avoid using pesticides. Pesticides kill the good bugs along with the bad. And avoid being so tidy. Remember seed heads, fallen leaves, and snags provide food and shelter for lots of different birds. Whether you have 10 acres or a tenth of an acre, you can attract more birds and butterflies to your yard by providing them with food, water, shelter, and space. A good landscape design will be beautiful, low maintenance, and a wildlife magnet. And you'll personally benefit from the wildlife by enjoying them and having them control many of your insect pests. So choose natural methods and have a healthy yard. And a healthy family too. Mm -hmm.